tonight asking me if I could uh, convince her that the square root of 3 is irrational. So this is going to be my attempt to do that. So recall that an irrational number simply means that it cannot be written as a rational number. It cannot be written as a fraction that is uh, consisting of two integers where the denominator is never zero. So in order to do this we're going to approach it by contradiction. So let's say that. Let's be very explicit. We'll assume by con or we'll by uh, we're going to go by contradiction. So the way we're going to approach this by contradiction is we're going to assume, for the sake of contradiction, assume that square root of 3 is rational. In other words, that it could be written as a fraction. Assume that the square root of 3 equals p over q for p, q being integers, and q not being equal to 0. Okay, we're going to hopefully derive a contradiction from this assumption. So, if this were true, notice now if we square both sides, we would get that 3 equals p squared over q squared, which in turn would imply, if we multiply both sides by q squared, 3q squared equals p squared. So on the left hand side we have a 3, so that means on the right hand side this would imply that 3 must divide p squared, and as we showed previously in our course, if 3 divides p squared, this must mean that 3 itself divides p. Okay, so if 3 divides p, that's fine. 3 divides some things, but this would mean that p must itself be equal to 3k for some k that is an integer, because that's what it means to be a multiple of 3. So Let's change modes, take this, I'll put it in a different color so we can see how we're going into a new paragraph. Now that p equals 3k, I'm simply going to substitute into that expression, or equation, sorry, which would now say, now notice 3q squared would be equal to p, which is now 3k squared. Whoops, got off with my parentheses there k squared. But what would that mean? That would mean that 3q squared is equal to, well, 3 times 3 is 9, so we get a 9k squared. Divide both sides by 3, and we'd now have q squared equals 3k squared. But now notice that 3 is on the right-hand side of the equation, q squared is on the left. So that would imply that 3 must divide q squared as before. That would mean that 3 divides q. Now, ah, I forgot to mention one other assumption here, <laughs> that when we wrote it as p over q, we're going to assume that p and q are in the lowest terms. So assume that rad 3 equals p over q, p uh, in lowest terms, for p, q in integers and q not equal to zero. Now it's important that it's in lowest terms because right here the argument doesn't really fail or anything like that but it's just more uh, explicit, it's more clear if we say that it's already been reduced in lowest terms because you can always reduce a fraction in the lowest terms and once it's reduced into lowest terms you can't have situations like this where 3 divides the numerator and simultaneously 3 divides the denominator. If they did, you would just reduce those threes out and you would be reduced, or you'd keep on reducing threes out until you were finally done. But what this argument essentially shows is that three will always go into both the numerator and the denominator, so you can't ever reduce this fraction into lowest terms. And that's a contradiction. This contradicts, this contradicts that p over q was in lowest terms. Was in lowest terms. And therefore, what do we get to conclude? Therefore, the assumption must be false, and therefore, radical 3 cannot be written as p over q. It cannot be a rational number. And this concludes this proof by contradiction.